I baptize thee, Catherine, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. No one who had ever seen Catherine Morland in her infancy would have supposed her born to be a heroine. Her situation in life, the character of her father and mother, and her own person and disposition were all equally against her. A family of ten children, of course, will always be called a fine family, where there are heads and arms and legs enough for the number. But the Morelands were in general very plain, and Catherine, for many years of her life, as plain as any. Neither was it very wonderful that Catherine, who had by nature nothing heroic about her, should prefer cricket and baseball to dolls and books. But by the age of 15, appearances were mending. Catherine Morland was in training for a heroine. Yes! <laughs> oh, look, oh, Catherine has turned out rather well. <laughs> Come on, Catherine, let's carry on. Right. Later, later. It's quite a good-looking girl. <laughs> well, she's almost pretty today. And she's grown very fond of reading of late. I wonder if it can be good for her, my dear, to read quite so many novels. Oh, why ever not? Now, what could be a more innocent or harmless pastime for a young girl than reading? He was interrupted by a noise in the passage leading to the room. It approached. The door was unlocked. A man entered, forcibly dragging behind him a beautiful girl. Her features bathed in tears and suffering the utmost distress. Take her! Don't be nowhere! I shall never see her more! Kathy? What are you doing? Nothing. What do you want, anyway? Mr. and Mrs. Allen are here. Mother says you have to come straight away. No, said Dr. Mallison. No other place will do so well for a gouty constitution like Mr. Allen's. No other place will do so well for... Oh! For squandering money. Oh, fine, Mr. Allen. You know you love to see me happy. <laughs> and thinking of that... Well, Catherine is young to go, but look... Should Mrs. Allen for protection? I see no danger in it. She's a good girl. I think we can trust her. Why, Catherine, how you've grown. Quite the young lady, isn't she, Mr. Allen? <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Allen come with an invitation, Catherine. We would like you to accompany us to Bath for a time. For when a young lady is to be a heroine, something must and will happen to throw adventure in her way. A tumult of emotion stirred in the bosom of Adeline and fear gripped her heart that at any moment ruffians would fly upon the carriage and return her to the ignominy of her captive state. My God, Mrs. Allen! Not long now. Their stories are hardly worth knowing, I should say. 
if they choose to roam the streets and they could be sitting at home by a good fire. Oh, Mr. Allen is so droll. He always says the opposite of what he means, for he loves good company. When shall we go into society, Mrs. Allen? I suppose it is too late this evening. Bless you, my child. We neither of us have a stitch 